Have you ever heard of the five elements? Namely, the wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. What exactly are the five elements and how can it be applied in Chinese medicine? Hello, Alex here. Today I'm going to be talking about another very important philosophical concept in Chinese medicine, the theory of the five elements. The five elements theory is used to understand and analyze interrelationships between our body organs and between our body and the nature. It is then used to act as a guide in terms of diagnosis and treatments. The five elements are wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Actually, at first, the five elements only refer to the five substances that people work with in their daily lives. For example, if people grew crops for wood, needed fire to cook, soil or earth is needed to grow plants, metal are used as tools, and water to drink or irrigate. Then, throughout time, the five elements expanded, and all things in the universe are classified into the five elements according to their properties. Let's take a look at the properties of each element. Wood. The basic properties of wood is that it can be bent and straightened. Plants expand and try to reach for the sun. Therefore, anything that represents growth or expansion and outward movements are categorized as wood. Fire. Fire flares upward. Anything that has a function of warmth, heat, and ascending are categorized as fire. Earth. Earth provides for sowing, growing, and reaping. Therefore, anything that has the function of generating, holding, and receiving are categorized as earth. Metal. Metal can be molded and changed. Anything that has the function or properties of purification, elimination, and reformation are categorized as metal. Water. Water moistens and flows downwards. Anything that has the function of being cold and cool, moistening, or flowing downwards are categorized as water. The table here shows the extension of the five elements to different aspects. For example, season-wise, wood is spring, fire is summer, earth is late summer, metal is autumn, and water is winter. Just understanding the properties of the five elements are not enough. We also have to understand the interrelationships between the five elements. The five elements are in constant motion and moving. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the two most basic relationships among the elements, the generating cycle and the destructive cycle. The law of the generating cycle is wood generates fire, fire generates earth, earth generates metal, metal generates water, and water generates wood. It may seem complicated to understand at first. However, let's use a simple example. Wood can be burned to produce fire, thus wood generates fire. The burnt remains is transformed into ashes and it gets absorbed back into the soil, which is earth, thus fire generates earth. Metal mines are buried in the earth, thus earth generates metal. Metal can be melted into liquid, thus metal generates water. Water is a fundamental ingredient for life. Water is used for irrigation to grow plants thus water generates wood. However, as I mentioned in the last video, there must be a yin and yang balance. If the five elements keeps generating, then there will be an excess of everything. So therefore, we must have a destructive cycle. And the law of destructive cycle is, water restrains fire, fire restrains metal, metal restrains wood, wood restrains earth, and earth restrains water. And again, let's use a simple example to describe Water can put out a fire, thus water restrains fire. Fire can melt metal and make it weak, thus fire restrains metal. Metal in a form of tool such as an axe can cut through woods or trees, thus metal restrains wood. Tree roots can grow down into the earth and consume the nutrients of the soil, thus wood restrains earth. Soil can be gathered to build a dam that blocks water, thus earth restrains water. Without generation, there is no birth and development. Without destruction, everything will be in excess and there will be harm. Therefore, a well-balanced system must include both generation and destruction. However, this graph is actually not the best representation of the five elements, and the earth should be in the middle, like this. 
If you like to understand the deeper meanings of the five elements, it is important to also understand the He Tu or the Yellow River Diagram. But I think it's good for now. In the future, I will make a series talking about the Yellow River Diagram and also another very important diagram known as the Luo Shu or the Nine Halls Diagram. Comment below if you're interested in this topic. Now let's talk about the application. Like the yin and yang theory, the five elements theory are used by Chinese people in all sorts of applications. For example, feng shui, which is the exterior and interior design of your house to balance the five elements so you can live healthy and in harmony with the environment. The five elements can also be applied in Chinese music. For example, the five notes corresponds to the five elements. Let's say one has a deficiency in water. By listening to a piece that has a major in water element will have a healing effect. And of course, the five elements is widely used in Chinese medicine. However, the topic is so wide that I can spend a full semester just talking about this. So today, I'm just going to talk about the service level. And among all, the most important is to understand the core relationships between the five elements and the five zhang organs. In the future, I will describe more in details about the Zhang organs. However, today all you need to know is wood is to liver, fire is to heart, earth is to spleen, metal is to lung, and water is to kidney. And the key to be healthy is to maintain the balance of the five elements. For example, if there is an excess in liver wood, it will over restrain the spleen earth. Thus, injuring and affecting the normal functions of the spleen. Therefore, understanding the five elements helps Chinese medicine doctors in terms of treatment principles. For example, if there is a deficiency in lung energy, doctors can reinforce the spleen energy in order to tonify the lung energy. Of course, in reality, cases are much more complex and it is not too simple. However, the five elements model is really helpful in helping Chinese medicine doctors to help analyze the patient's issues. I hope you found the five elements theory interesting. In the future, I will be talking a lot more about how to apply the five elements into your diet, into your exercises for better health. If you like this video, please subscribe and stay tuned. Up next, I will be talking about the most important substance in the universe, the qi. So, I'll see you in the next video.